Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and Lesson 17 is going to be the answer to the rich man's song explaining how banking really works. Some poetry again. So, remember what the rich man said. Hallelujah with usury, I'm blessed. While debt slaves curse the men who first invented interest. Answer to the rich man. To the rich man, I do say you're going for a ride. With global problems out of hand, it might be time to hide. I may have understood your urge to live a life of ease before the earth was stricken with the usury disease. But now that acid rain is here, I do not understand how you can go on merrily without a lending hand. The ozone is depleting fast as acid rain is here nuclear pollution threatens man year after year you'll find your reasoning breaks down the moment we assess after inflation and income taxes money gets you less if with one one hundred dollars you can buy one hundred beers invest it in a bank for twenty extra in two years but the inflation will erode your whole totality which buys you only beers you would have got initially. Once government takes taxes, only half your gain you're let. And when you spend your money, only 92 beers are what you get. So would you choose to stop accepting 20 more increase for ending of inflation and that income taxes cease? Please take it from the engineer. The costs are very clear. My case for linearity in banking is so clear. So give up on your wish for something for nothing. <laughs> Don't forget, if you're getting something for nothing, somebody else is getting nothing for something. So economics. In economics, it is shown the measurement for debt are made in variable units, which we all live to regret. The unit of the measurement, the dollar is its name. Its value rises up and down in the financial game. Attempting to do measurement with units that gyrate, like using rubber rulers, they can never get it straight. This cover for the system that is causing people pain is taught in economics and it scrambles up the brain. In all the other sciences, stability we use with inches, feet, kilometers, they do not confuse. Engineers do buildings straight to stable units, thanks. Economists with rubber ruler build us crooked banks. The concept of a stable money changing not a bit. Too simple for considering, they won't examine it. The more they've studied rubber money, elasticity, the more impossible it is to ever have them see. What's plugging up their thinking are the errors they were taught. The economic science is the story they have bought. The system must have interest so it be feasible, considering another system is impossible. But what can cloud the minds of men to wicked knavery, promoting by the growth of debt, financial slavery? Now, in the Battle of the Banking Systems Engineer, the next one is how the money works, and that explains the tap and the drain, which I've done in an earlier post. And then the next one is the comparison of models, the piggy bank, reservoir only model with the casino bank it has a tap creating new chips and finally here's a lesson on interest i didn't have time for the other post when sister needs a nickel and the piggy bank is bare how can her brother help her when the nickel isn't there and when the piggy bank is bare no loans are made at all since money lacks there is no way for commerce not to stall he asked his father for the coin his means were to the test Please lend a nickel, and I'll give you surely interest. I'll lend you nickel, so you'll learn that loans one should not seek. With interest, you'll owe six cents. I'll see you in a week. So now his bank could lend the coin, the nickel for a fee. He told her, have six cents next week at this locality. If sister failed to pay on time, his father might be mean. He made her pledge her favorite toy, a kitty's type of lean. When neared the day that he should pay his father what was due, he said there was a problem with some math he could not do. His sister was no help at all, the nickel all she had. He had to find an extra cent to pay it back to dad. When seven days had all expire, her toy he repossessed and offered it with nickel to his dad as interest. 
But father said, that's not the deal. There'll be an extra cent. That is what we agreed upon, of which you'll soon repent. Now, if you could pay your interest with cows or with grain or with stuff, that wouldn't be so bad. But you can't. You gotta sell it and come up with cash. So, that's what the father's saying to the kid here. Don't give me her doll, I, her toy. That's what you agreed upon. You owe six cents and have just five. I tell you what I'll do. Pay me the five. You owe me one. We'll start the game anew. I'll lend you five. So you may pay the cent of money's prime. You'll leave with four. But owe me six next week at the end of time. Next week with four and owing six. Predicament again. No problem. Pay the money's time. I'll see you you know when. Next week with three and owing six. Another one he paid. Next week with two and owing six. He felt a bit afraid. Next week, his last cent paid the time. He left the scene so broke. Next week, he couldn't pay and now learned of oppressive yoke. To pay your interest, you need to have a weekly cent. So you will work a weekly chore to pay for money's rent. For every week thereafter, pupil paid the rental due and borrowing that nickel was a move he did soon rue. At first it seems so simple, the rent of money's time, but once you're in, there's no way out of money traps sublime, mort, gage, death, gamble. Father demonstrated to his brood that debt supreme, the stealing of the victim's labor is the name of the scheme. Then I explained how banks are not like piggy banks. They have a tap and a drain. And now here's some game theory. I explained how the principal they borrow, but they owe the principal and the debt to the pump house. And if nine guys come up with 11, the 10th guy has none because they used his principal to pay their interest. And I ended up with the miracle equation, but I didn't go into the higher tech math, which I'll do now. Game theory. The number of survivors is P over P plus I. The ratio of losers is I over P plus I. This shows that I over P plus I is debt you cannot state. The confiscation of your watches happens at this rate. Less watches backing up the chips drives value down for sure. We have induced inflation in chips that were once so pure. With exponential functions, we can name all of our curves. With differential equations, we can follow all their swerves. The debt times interest equals d debt over dt. This exponential is the debt times e to the it. With transforms of Laplace, things can reduce to a times b. And a times b is algebra, the easiest way to see. The Laplace 1 over s minus 1 will i will tell us quite a lot the pole is in the right hand plane so stable it is not in engineering if you have an instability it can be drawn and that instability shows in the right hand plane of your graph when you're dealing with the imaginary numbers powerful stuff then of course i interest i explained how interest causes shift b inflation and, of course, they tell us that interest fights shift A inflation. So, the only question is, is what's going on shift A or shift B inflation? If it's shift A inflation and we've all got too much money, well, then raising the interest is right is the right answer. But if it's shift B inflation, we don't have enough money and they're foreclosing too much, then interest would cause more foreclosure. So, I did the Mother Nature story, and I mentioned how they couldn't build their houses and they couldn't grow their food, they couldn't clothe their families, such ineptitude. We, here's the new stuff. We all are the consumers of our man-made energy. We feed on our own services. We do trade frequently. It could be mass times speed of light, matter. Uh, instantane, uh, we know that's energy. It could be mankind doing work instantaneously. But as you meld both energy, value to man does grow. Technology has reached a state enough for man to crow. All life consumes the product of a melded energy, the tools we have to work for and the sun we get for free. What makes the ants superior to men in all his deeds? The ants are not dependent on scarce money for their needs. To demonstrate, we'll give some chimps some coins put in a slot.
and out will come bananas, so tree climbing they need not. It's easier to pick up coins than risk life climbing tree. So is it any wonder that the chimps use coins for free? So chips cut down, chimps cut down banana trees to make themselves some swings. With coins to buy bananas, there was wood for other things. Now cut back on the circulation of the coins replaced and watch them start to fight for coins in ways that men have faced. And with their coins, they start to hoard for their security, while others would go hungry, and a pity it would be. And as they struggled over coins, would they take a life? Just check man's record, and you'll see a case of deadly strife. Man is the only animal who has to pass the test. To get cash for his pay, his boss must pay some interest.